Never forget to have your water around you. This is pretty important to stay hydrated, you know? All right. Today we're going to be doing Advent of Code Day 15. Advent of Code is basically this monthly challenge where there's two pu program puzzles released every day. Um, I'm going to be doing every one of these and then making video solutions. So that's what today is all about, Day 15. Um, all the code, uh, my, all my solutions are going to be in a GitHub repository, which is linked in the description. And a playlist to all past and future videos is also going to be in the description. So today we're just going to be doing Day 15. I'll be reading the problems, solving them, and then explaining them. All right, day 15, rambunctious recitation. You catch the airport shuttle and try to book a new flight to your vacation island. Due to the storm, all direct flights have been canceled, but a route was available to get around the storm. You take it. While you wait for your flight, you decide to check in with the elves back at the North Pole. They're playing a memory game and are ever so excited to explain the rules. In this game, the players take turns saying numbers. They begin by taking turns reading from a list of starting numbers, your puzzle input. Then, each turn consists of considering the most recently spoken number. If that was the first time the number has been spoken, the current player says zero. Otherwise, the number that had been spoken before, the current player announces how many turns apart that number is from when it was previously spoken. So, after the starting numbers, each turn results in that player speaking aloud either zero or an age. For example, suppose the starting numbers are 036. It would go zero because... That's the starting number. It goes 0, 3, 6, and then it goes 0, because 6 is unique, then 3, 3, 1, 0, 4, 0. Okay, the question for you is, what will be the 2020th number spoken? In the example above, the 2020th number spoken will be 436. Oh, yeah, and the game ends when the elves get sick of playing or dinner is ready, whichever comes first. Okay, so here's a few more examples. Um... Given your starting numbers, what will be the 2020th number spoken? And in fact, they give the puzzle input directly inside the uh, the problem statement here because it's so short. So, yeah, I'll just solve the problem and then explain it. So I'll be back in five seconds. Okay, that took a while, but we got our answer. It is 203, and that is correct. Okay, so let's explain. Let's explain. Okay. So, first, um, okay, let's break this down a little. Okay, so basically, we just have to keep track of two things. Um, when a number is last spoken, and when a number was spoken before that. So, to do that, we actually have two dictionaries. Um, these are equivalent to maps in other languages. So, these dictionaries basically count the index at which the previous number was last spoken, or any number was last spoken, I guess. So first we start at um, zero for our index because zero numbers have been spoken so far and we need to start at an index of one. Then we go through all the starting numbers, incrementing um, the spoken count by one each time. If our current number was in the dictionary that counts one number was last spoken, then we need to make last last spoken, so this is our other dictionary that counts the one um, if there's two occurrences of a number, it counts the second most recent occurrence. Um, so it makes the second most recent occurrence the previous most recent occurrence, and then it makes the most recent occurrence just the current index. So, for example, let's say um, there was 0, 3, 6, um, and then the next number was 0, um, and let's just say this was part of the starting sequence. Then 0, 3, and 6, they would all be put into this last spoken dictionary. They would all... Um, so 0 would have an index of 1, 3 would have an index of 2, 6 would have an index of 3, and then 0. We see that 0 is already in the dictionary of last spoken um, because it has been spoken on the first turn. So it would make last last spoken equal to 1. It would transfer that backwards. And then last spoken would just be the current one. So this 0, um, last spoken of 0 would have 3 because that's the most recent uh, 4, because that's the most recent index, and then the second most recent index is going to be 1. So last spoken is most recent index, last last spoken is second most recent index. Okay, we also need to track our previous number, which is just the number that was said most previously, so we just set that equal to um, the most recent number, and then we need to go uh, off the starting numbers. So uh, each we need to make sure that the index of our spoken number is always less than n because we increment it at the beginning of the loop 
um, and then the rest of it is just figuring out what number to say right now, and that's stored in the uh, variable cur. So if the previous number has been spoken twice already, so yeah, it was if it was not the first time the number has been spoken because it has a second most recent occurrence, which means it's been spoken twice, then we set our occurrence uh, number to be the difference between the last occurrence and the second most recent occurrence. Otherwise, the number has, um, it is the first time the number has been spoken because it has been spoken twice yet. So we set our current number to be zero. Um, and now we need to update our dictionaries for our current number. So if our current number is already been spoken once, then we need to set that index to be second most recent. And then um, if it hasn't already been spoken yet, um, then we just set our current spoken value to the current index. Uh, most recent spoken value to the current index. And then after that, we need to set our previous number to our current number, uh, just to pass on the, the baton. And then, yeah, after that, we're done. After the number of spoken numbers has equaled n. And then we return, we just return, yeah, that number, um, the previous number, which is the very last number. And yeah, all this is just pressing the input. And then after this, we just call the function on the starting numbers and 2020. And then we print our answer. Okay, that's pretty good. That's for part one. Hopefully that made sense. All right, part two. Impress the elves issue you a challenge. Determine the 30 millionth number spoken. For example, given the same starting numbers as above, given 036, oh, okay. What will be the 30 millionth number spoken? Okay, so that's pretty interesting. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. 30 million, actually 30 million isn't that big. So let's just try it out. Okay, that took a while, like a few seconds, but it's done running. So, boom, that's right, all right. Okay, so I think they were trying to get us to do something smarter, but uh, like do some kind of, I don't know, like, DP or something, just memoization. Um, but we didn't we didn't have to do any of that. We just called it and it ran. it took a few seconds to run, but it was under a minute. So that's fine. It's fine. And the reason I know that thirty million would be fine is because, um, like I I've, I've done competitive programming right, and from that you understand that. Like you under you have an intuitive sense of what input sizes are going to run in a reasonable amount of time. So this doesn't have any nested for loops, for example. So it just goes one number by one number. It doesn't have to consider any previous numbers like twice or n times. It only depends on the input size. So 30 million is just going to take 30 million operations to run. It's not going to take 30 million squared. So 30 million is a reasonable input size. It can run in a reasonable amount of time. So it won't take it takes on the order of seconds, not on the order of minutes or hours or days. So it's reasonable, so we can execute it. And I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of memes about this in the in the subreddit. But yeah, my strategy was just to uh, do the same function, but call it on 30 million instead of 2020. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Um, that was a bit of an anticlimactic second puzzle, but you know, hopefully that was fun. That was fun, I think. Uh, hopefully that made sense. Hopefully that helped out a little bit. Hopefully it was entertaining. Um, looks like the next leg like, of our journey is going to be to another island in the middle of nowhere. Or maybe this is the airport. I don't know. Uh, I've lost track of where we are. But, yeah, that was fun. That was fun. So, uh, that's pretty much it for today's video. Uh, I want to say thank you for watching and make sure to check out the code in the description as well as the playlist. I also want to say um, if you watched this far, then please, please consider subscribing to my channel. Um, it really helps out. I'm trying to hit 400 <clears throat> by the end of the year. We only have 16 left to go, and there's actually quite a few days left. So please um, consider subscribing. It um, helps a lot, and it only takes a little bit of effort. Oh, I should also show you the stats. One second. So according to YouTube statistics, only 11% of you are subscribed. So um, yeah, that's not that's not very cool. Um, that that's fine. That's fine. So let's let's make this number bigger. Let's um, let's try to make it bigger. Uh, so yeah, thanks.
All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with day 16. Goodbye.